Hello, Fred Douglas Elementary students. This is Mrs. Summers from third grade Spanish Immersion, and I am going to be reading pages 237 through 248 of the one and only Ivan. New box. Something strange is happening. The white-coated woman is back with other humans. They place a large box in the center of the ring. It's ruby-sized. And suddenly I know why the woman is here. She's here to take Ruby away. Training. The woman leads Ruby to the box. She places an apple inside. Good girl, Ruby, she says kindly. Don't be afraid. Ruby inspects the box with her trunk. The woman makes a clicking sound with a little piece of metal she is holding in her hand. She gives Ruby a piece of carrot. Each time Ruby touches the box, she gets a click and a treat. Why is she making that clicking noise, I ask Bob. They do that to dogs all the time, Bob says. I can tell he doesn't prove. It's called clicker training. They want Ruby to associate the noise with the treat. When she does something they want, they make that noise. Great job, Ruby, the woman says. You are a quick study. After many clicks and carrots, she takes Ruby back to her cage. Why is that lady giving me carrots when I touch the box, Ruby asked me. I think she wants you to go inside, I explain. But there's nothing inside, Ruby says, except an apple. Inside that box, I say, is the way out. <clears throat> Ruby tilts her head. I don't get it. See the picture of the red giraffe on the box? I think the lady is from the zoo, Ruby. I think she's getting ready to take you there. I wait for Ruby to trumpet with joy, but instead she just stares at the box in silence. I'm not sure you understand. That box might be taking you to a place where there are other elephants, I say. A place with more room and humans who care about you. But even as I say these words, I remember with a shudder the last box I was in. I don't want a zoo, Ruby says. I want you and Bob and Julia. This is my home. No, Ruby, I say, this is your prison. Poking and prodding. The lady comes again. She brings an animal doctor with an awful smell and a dangerous looking bag. He spends an hour with Ruby, poking and prodding. He looks at her eyes, her feet, her trunk. When he's done with Ruby, he enters my cage. I wish I could hide under, not tag like Bob. Instead, I do a nice loud chest beat, and after a moment, the doctor retreats. We're going to need to put this one under, he says. I'm not quite sure what he means, but I strut around my cage feeling victorious anyway. <clears throat> no painting. No one asked me to paint today. No one asked Ruby to perform. There are no shows. No visitors unless you count the protesters. Max stays in his office all day. <clears throat> More boxes. I wake up from a long morning nap. Bob is on my belly, but he isn't asleep. He's watching the ring where four men are placing a large metal box. It's me-sized. What's that, I ask, still blurry from sleep. Bob nuzzles my chin. I believe that box is for you, my friend. I'm not sure what he means. Me? They brought in a lunch of bunch of boxes while you were sleeping. Looks to me like they're taking the whole lot of you. He says casually licking a paw, even Thelma. Taking, I repeat, taking us where? Well, some to the zoo probably, others to an animal shelter where humans will try to find them homes. Bob shakes himself. So, I guess all good things must come to an end, huh? His voice is bright, but his eyes are far away and sad. I'm gonna miss your stomach, big guy. Bob shuts his eyes. He makes an odd noise in his throat. But what about you, I ask? I can't tell if Bob's just pretending to sleep, but he doesn't answer. I gaze at the huge, shadowy box, and suddenly I understand how Ruby feels. I don't wanna go into that box. The last time I was in a box, my sister died. Goodbye. When George and Julia come that night, George doesn't get his mop or his broom. He gathers up his tools and belongings while Julia runs to my cage. 
This is my last night, Ivan, she says, and she presses her palm to my glass. Mac fired my dad. Tears slipped down her cheeks. But the zoo lady said maybe they'll have an opening there in a while, cleaning cages and stuff. I walk to the glass that separates us. I put my hand where Julia's is, palm to palm, finger to finger. My hand is bigger, but they're not so very different. I'm going to miss you, Julia says, and Ruby and Bob. But this is a good thing, really, it is. You deserve a different life. I stare into her dark eyes and wish I had words for her. Sniffling, she goes to Ruby's cage. Have a good life, Ruby, she says. Ruby makes a little rumbling sound. She puts her trunk between the bars and touches Julia's shoulder. Where is Bob anyway? Julia asks. She looks around, under tables, in my cage, by the trash can. Dad, she calls, have you seen Bob? Bob? Nope, George says. Julia's brow wrinkles. What's going to happen to him, Dad? What if Max shuts down the whole mall? He says he's going to try to keep it open without the animals, George says. He stuffs his hands in his pockets. I'm worried about Bob too, but he's a survivor. You know what, Dad, Julia gets a gleam in her eye. Bob could live with us. Mom loves dogs and he could keep her company and... Jules, I'm not even sure I have a job yet. I may not even be able to feed you, let alone some mutt. My dog walking money. Sorry, Jules. Julia nods, I understand. She starts to leave, then runs back to my cage. I almost forgot. This is for you, Ivan. She slips a piece of paper into my cage. It's a drawing of Ruby and me. We're eating yogurt raisins. Ruby is playing with another baby elephant and I'm holding hands with a lovely gorilla. She has red lips and a flower in her hair. I look as I always do in Julia's pictures, like an elegant fellow, but something is different about this drawing. In this picture, I am smiling.